All right, welcome back to another episode of the Young Guides podcast fly tying tutorials on the YouTube channel. I'm Kyle Wilkinson, and today we'll be tying the Frenchie. This is a really great um, all around nymph pattern. It could imitate a caddis uh, peeping out of its shuck, it could be a mayfly imitation, it could be a small stone fly. Um, probably one of the best all-around patterns there is um, simply because of a lot of the materials that I'm going to use and it is a basic pattern again another great guide pattern you're going to see it's pretty easy to tie pretty quick very few materials but the best material that it uses is this pheasant tail this pheasant tail um, is great color it has great segmentation it's got these little tiny like micro fibers on here and that really make this pattern breathe and I think that's one of the things that really sets apart um, not just a pheasant tail on this fly pattern, but pheasant tail in any pattern that, uh, or any nymph pattern or any kind of fly pattern you would use this material in. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. I've got this on a jig hook. I believe this is a size 16 with a corresponding tungsten slotted bead size. Again, if you guys have watched some of the videos, I don't really pay attention to the size of the beads. Um, I just buy them that when I think they are the right size and then I just throw them in a bin um, and don't really keep track of what sizes are which. Just try to match it up with how I think the fly should look. So you see I have some black unithread I just started uh, behind the bead and it can move around a little bit. I'm not too worried about that right now. And that's just a dot. That's my favorite size. So now that I got that started, I'm gonna go ahead and take I don't know, probably, probably about this many fibers, anywhere between four and six fibers off the stem, cut them flush. Now all the ends are going to be pointing the same direction, so I'm just going to give it a spin in my fingers to get those points point a little bit different direction. I'm going to tie that in with those tip, tips and going out the back as a tail. That's a little bit of a long tail. I'm gonna go ahead and shorten it up just a little bit. And if I just kind of touch those a little bit, it'll kind of splay out and it'll look like the tails on a mayfly nymph for some kind of aquatic insect, maybe the tails on a stone fly. Or honestly, if you're imitating a caddis and it doesn't have a tail, that could be just as, just as well. From here, I'm going to take some of my small copper ultra wire and I'm going to rip off maybe a three or four inch section and I'm going to tie that going in out the back. And as you guys know, I've talked on previous videos, I want to have this wire stretching in the entire length of the shank because I don't have a big bulky spot right at the back end of the fly. I want to taper this. And now as I am wrapping that down, I'm just taking my thread and building up a bit of a body. Again, I want to have a taper that kind of goes towards the front, towards the thorax. Just building it up. And what you guys might be able to see in the video, it looks like I'm, I've kind of nicked my thread in a couple spots, probably on the hook as I'm just wrapping it. That's okay. Just building that body. I'm gonna build up this thorax region a little bit more. That's probably good there. Now I'm gonna set my whip finishes, maybe do two or three, so I can hold that in place, because now I'm gonna use the rotary function. Sorry, I just bumped the camera there. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna hold on to my pheasant tail, I rotate the vise, hold my copper wire out of the way for a second. I'm gonna grab the pheasant tail fibers. Now, if you tie them in the way I do, where I just have the tail going out the back and then I leave uh, and I, I just start wrapping from there, um, you do have to be careful of not ripping these fibers. I know some people will tie in a pheasant tail tail and then um, tie in a separate section uh, to wrap the body. You can do that. It's just an extra step that I've just I skip over just because again, this is an easy guide fly. It's an extra step, it's more time. So I just continue using this one piece. So I rotate it forward, use my finger to kind of hold those in place while I wrap over them. I'm gonna cut those little tag ends off. It doesn't have to be perfect because it's gonna be covered up in just a second. 
So when I rotated my vise, I rotated it away from me. I'm gonna take my copper wire and I'm gonna go in even wraps over the top of the pheasant tail coming towards me. This is gonna add just a little bit of flash to the pattern, a little bit of segmentation, but by counter wrapping that pheasant tail, you're also strengthening it because that pheasant tail is pretty, um, pretty fragile. So if you don't have something counter wrapping it like some copper wire, it would tear pretty easily after a fish or two. And it'll still tear as it is, uh, just not quite as quickly. And honestly, when it does tear, sometimes it looks a little bit buggier maybe, and the, you tend to catch more fish on the same fly after a while. Now here is where you can kind of do whatever you want. You could tie on um, really any kind of dubbing. You could tie on maybe some of this pheasant tail color dubbing. You could tie on this olive brown Orvis dubbing, which is my favorite, as you guys know, and I'm probably gonna use that today. Um, you can use purple, you can use blue. Just kind of let your um, imagination run wild. Um, a lot of times this is gonna be the hot spot on this nymph, and this is what's really gonna attract uh, the fish to it. So play around. I've done it in orange, I've done it in olive, done it in blue, purple. Play around, figure out what you like, and keep tying them that way. But like you said, like I said, you guys know I like this olive brown dubbing from Orvis. I'm gonna go ahead and pull out a little tuft of that. I'm just gonna dub it on the line and I'm going to wrap it behind the bead. You can make this thicker, as thicker as sparse as you want. I'm probably gonna add a little, little bit more. Whoops, I dropped that, I'm gonna another piece. The reason I like this is again, if I hit this with the UV light, it really lights up. And I just, I, I just think this olive brown is a great all around nymph color. Um, this would be a great imitation for a cat that's sticking its head out of its little shuck on the bottom of the river. Could be the green on a blueing olive. I just, I really like that olive brown color. I think it works really well. And that's the Frenchie. Super easy to tie guide pattern. I'd fish this on the Yakima. I'll fish this up here. I've cut grayling on pheasant tails and, and Frenchies. It's just a super buggy pattern. It's also very sparse, so it sinks really well, especially with that tungsten bead. Great to fish behind something like a Pats if you can fish multiple flies, and it's gonna get you pretty close to the bottom. It'll also uh, be a great dropper fly. This is one of my favorite patterns when I was fishing in the fall on the Yakima. Um, run like a chubby or a stimulator, some kind of like October caddis pattern, uh, or if I'm fishing grasshoppers or stoneflies in the summer, and then dropping this uh, anywhere from a foot to three feet behind it. Uh, since it's got that tungsten head, it's gonna sink really well, and you can pick up fish um, subsurface and use your dry as your indicator, or um, you could catch them on that indicator, or on your dry fly as well. Um, while you're nymphing. That's one reason I always fish dry dropper is you get just as good a chance catching them on the top fly that you're using as an indicator as you are on the bottom fly. So that's the Frenchie. Great all around pattern. Tie this. You can tie this as small as you want. You can tie this probably like an 1820. Imitate really small mayflies, maybe even little midges. And you can tie it as big as, you know, a 12 or a 10. It could be a great imitation for a stone fly, especially those squalas. A great Great color for imitating a squall of stone. Um, right now, if you're fishing on the Yakima, um, this would be your, one of your best imitations for imitating that March brown hatch, which should be popping off here in the next few weeks. With that, we appreciate you guys watching another episode of the Fly Tying Tutorials on the Young Guides Podcast YouTube channel. Remember to check us out on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, Google Podcasts, or our website, theyoungguidespodcast.com. And please leave us a rating and review. Um, really helps us out. And then if you can, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Share with your friends. And uh, leave a comment down below. Let us know how you're liking these videos. And uh, tell us what you want to see in the future. Um, I'm just sharing with you guys some of my favorite guide patterns for both in Alaska and back home in Washington. And, and really anywhere um, in the West that... Um, um, that I've had experience with and any places that um, these bugs that we're trying to imitate live in. So with that, appreciate you guys watching and we'll catch you on the next one.